In this video, I'll be doing some symbolization questions that featured in an old test. So there are five questions here, and we're probably going to be increasing the difficulty level as we go along. So here's the first question. Even though Rosie likes coffee, she won't order two unless she's on vacation. So we always want to identify as best we can the main connectives and the main markers here. So this even though, um, this isn't anything special. It, a lot of words we'll see sort of just are phrases that mean and. So even though is an and, and it pairs with that comma right there. Now the thing about this pairing is that uh, even though and is a binary connective, we can actually start sentences with a binary connective, and it sort of just marks off that we have one clause and then the other. So in this case, Rosie likes coffee is on one side of the conjunction, and she won't order two unless she's on vacation is on the other. So Rosie likes coffee, that's straightforward, that's just P. So what do we put on the other side? She won't order two unless she's on vacation. So I'm going to open a bracket here, just so I don't mess up my main connective by accident. She won't order two, that's just negation R. And then we have unless she's on vacation, which is Q. So there's actually three different ways of symbolizing the unless. Uh, so one way is to have um, just use the disjunction. So it could be negation R or Q. Now the other ways that unless is sort of natural is to use the phrasing if not one then the other. So we could have said not Q arrow not R, or we could have said uh, R arrow Q. Now notice here for the R arrow Q at the bottom, I could have said double negation R arrow Q. It doesn't really matter. So the final answer here is P and one of these three uh, forms of unless. Sally will be on time only if neither Joe nor Kelly will be late. So let's just do a bit of highlighting. I clearly have this only if, which is going to be something, and I also have some sort of neither nor, and uh, those are sort of the two sort of key things that I need to focus on. Sally will be on time, that's just P. Joe, Kelly will be late, that's Q, R. So I can actually just do the one component here, the neither nor, just off to the side. That'll just sort of help me keep organized. So neither Joe nor Kelly will be late. Uh, so this is tricky because uh, notice that these are on time, on time, and the note here says, assume that if you are not uh, on time, then you are late. So to be late is really the negation of these things. Okay, so neither Joe nor Kelly will be late. The standard form of neither nor is like this and I just have to put each component in here so I get not Q as well as not R. So that's neither Joe nor Kelly will be late. Uh, you could use uh, what is often called de the De Morgan's form, which is to say not not Q and not not R, which is of course the same as Q and R. So any of these three forms would satisfy the neither nor. Now the only thing I need to figure out is, is this sentence P arrow dot 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 or is it dot 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 arrow p, where the dot 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 is uh, the sort of neither nor that's over here. And this is really just decomposing the only if. Well, the way I sort of suggest in the video is you remove the word only, and you just symbolize it saying, Sally will be on time if neither Joe nor Kelly would be late. And that is, of course, uh, this way, because the if introduces the antecedent. But uh, when we put the only back in, it reverses the direction, and that means it's this way. So here, it should be P arrow, and then your form of choice here, uh, negation, negation Q, or negation R. And so I have the only if, which is there, the neither nor, which is there, and the one sort of trick here is be careful, it says we'll be late, these are on time, so I need to negate them. At least two of Max, Josh, and Itziri showing up is sufficient for Yi to start the game. So, of course, I have this at least two. That's one sort of key component. And I have is sufficient for. So the sufficiency, as we know, introduces a conditional. Now, the only thing I have to identify is which is the sufficient condition. And then I know that the sufficient condition always introduces the antecedent. So because it says uh, at least two of blah, 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 is sufficient for this. I know that uh, Yi starts the game is over here, so I know at the very minimum my sentence should look like 
this because the sufficient condition is the at least two of them showing up and then uh, that's why it goes in the antecedent. So here I make sure that the arrow is the main connective and I just need to put at least two of these things show up here. There's several forms of at least two, but the easiest one is just to say these two uh, or these two or these two. And that's what I'm going to do here. So the first two option is W and X. And then I'll say or it could have been W and Y or it could have been X and Y. Now, this does include the possibility that all three show up because, of course, disjunction is inclusive, so it could be multiple ones, and that's why it is genuinely at least two. Tiff won't play both Ultimate Frisbee and Soccer exactly on the condition that she isn't healthy. This one features a won't both, which is, as you can see, a negation of the both, so this is of the form not both. We also have exactly on the condition, and so that's a sort of easy one to identify because exactly on the condition is a biconditional. So isn't healthy, TIFF is healthy there, not T, and so we're ready to go. This is a pretty straightforward question, we just need to make sure that we get the not both correct. So the standard form of not both is negation with an and in the middle. She won't play both ultimate frisbee and soccer. Exactly on the condition that she isn't healthy. The alternate form of the not both here is often called the De Morgan's form is not P or not Q. Now notice in this case, my secondary form, I actually don't need brackets around here because the informal notation still says this biconditional dominates. However, putting the brackets around it is certainly A-OK. -okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Our last question is a longer one, and so we're gonna have to break it down carefully. Although one being happy is necessary for being satisfied, only if one being satisfied is sufficient for happiness, is it the case that for one to be happy, it is necessary to be healthy? Now, this just has a lot of junk in it, but if we just break it down, it's not so bad. We can see that we actually lead off with the although, and just like I said earlier, we can actually open with a binary connective, and we have to look for the appropriate marker that sort of separates uh, the first half of the binary and the second half of the binary. And this is typically just a comma. So what this is telling us is that I have two clauses here, two main clauses, and my main connective should just be and. So I have to have and as the main connective because that preserves the although comma as the main connective here. So I'm just gonna sort of zero in on this first clause then. One being happy is necessary for being satisfied. And the necessary condition here is the thing before it, because it's saying this is necessary, and the necessary condition always introduces the consequent. So that means to be satisfied, T, one must be happy, S. And that takes care of the first half of the sentence. So that's pretty good. I'm gonna do some highlighting here in the second half to help us break this down. This says only if, and then I have this first condition, I'm going to reuse some colors. One being satisfied is sufficient for happiness. And then I have, is it the case that for one to be happy, it is necessary to be healthy? Now, the only if I know is a conditional. And the purple is one clause, and this blue here is the other. So what I really just need to know is, is this purple and then blue? or is it blue then purple? And this is the question related to the only if. And if I can figure this out, the structure of my sentence will be correct. Well, without the only, it would be purple then blue, because that's uh, just introduces with the word if. But of course, with the only, it's not purple then blue, it's actually gonna be blue then purple. So this tells me that the first thing I should symbolize is this blue. For one to be happy, it is necessary to be healthy. So again, this is a necessary condition, but in this case, the necessary condition is pointing to the healthiness. So don't memorize that necessary condition in, um, sort of puts the front thing at the back. That's not always gonna work in English because we can have pointer phrases. So here it says the necessary condition is healthiness. So for one to be happy, 
means uh, one is happy. It is necessary, it must be the case, that you are healthy. So far, so good. Now, this is the arrow, and just to sort of highlight, that's the green, um, as I've highlighted it in the actual question. And now I'm ready to do the purple side. Now, I need to be careful. I want to preserve the and as the main connective, so I'll open a big bracket here, and I'll close it at the end. Now, the purple side just says one being satisfied is sufficient for happiness, so the sufficient condition is the being satisfied because the sufficient condition is the antecedent. So one being satisfied is sufficient for uh, happiness, which is S. Close the brackets, and that's it. So I'll highlight again, just so that you can sort of see the structure of my sentence here. So that's one, and that's the blue. Okay, so breaking it down around the main connective makes this a lot more approachable. And then you just need to ask, well, what's the antecedent, what's the consequent, over and over again, and this problem solves.